is Jane from the Salty Tribe Company. Well, welcome or welcome back. This is the core text uh, books that we're going through and all of the literature. We're doing all the books in one video. So I will just add chapters so you can click to whatever grades you're teaching this year. So there are some crossover books that are in elementary and middle or middle and high school. So I will just show all the books for each grade so you can get the list that you need. So for the core books of year three, obviously Bible. Um, this, my favorite is the Dewey Rames. Um, I think it's Benedict Press. Yes, I love the way it feels in hand. And definitely tab them because if you go to Samuel, it's second book of Samuel, but also second book of Kings. So they're, just make sure you tab them in case you forget that they were titled differently back when they did the Dewey Rames. For faith, we are using not just the Bible, we're using the Virtues for Catholic Youth. This is the first 12 weeks of the school year. This is made by Catholic Sprouts. It is meant to be, I think, where you get one per child, but we're going to use one for all grades. It's tabbed up by week, and each uh, week has what to do on each day of the week for that lesson. So this is Vices and Virtues. And you do this all together. It's all grades. Um, yeah, you don't have to buy one for each student um, to save money. I mean, you could, and then they could write in it. But we would just do the discussion questions out loud um, as instructed in the curriculum in Salt and Light, or um, they can word it, uh, write it out in their journals. For science this year, this is one of the sources we're using for Nature Study 2. And I love this book by Claire Walker Leslie because it makes nature journaling just seem so much more approachable and not as intimidating. She makes it nice and easy. I mean, you can do this. So it's one of my favorite books. I've used this for, gosh, almost, almost a decade now. It's an excellent source. For biology, we are using everything you need to ace biology in one big fat notebook. It's the high school edition. It can be used for all the grades that I put in here. And I have it all listed out what to do for different ages. There's, I reviewed several books to try to figure out which one to use for biology. This one was the best one with one caveat. Uh, we don't use it, but it does have, it, I note it in the curriculum which page it is. There's a page about um, gender and like choosing your own gender. So um, that shouldn't, that doesn't belong in a biology book. Uh, that's an opinion. So I make note of that. Everything else in here is legit, but just that one page. For art elective this year, we have Draw Your Day for Kids. Now this book is set up to be instructional and then the other half is a sketchbook. I don't use it that way. My kids would not be drawing in this. Just use your own sketchbooks and then the um, assignments will be pulled from here and um, just what I've written in Salt and Light. So just to give you a look at what that is. This is such a fun activity to do. The other elective is entrepreneurship. This is the book we're using. There is an alternative text that I put in there for high schoolers if they want to add to it. Uh, it's not required. And there are also videos that I linked in the curriculum for high schoolers if they want to deepen their entrepreneur study. But here is the book that we're using. And all the activities and everything that I have to go with this are in Salt and Light all written out for you. For history this year, it is World Cultures and Religions. The religions book is going to be for middle school, like seventh grade through 12th grade. Um, the focus on the younger grades is for geography and learning about different cultures and countries and stuff like that. So um, this was the best book that I could find that was not biased towards any one religion. And it just gives the facts of the different religions, which is really helpful so you can understand where other people are coming from, which is super important to understanding why we believe what we believe. And it makes it easier to have a more intelligent conversation with someone else who has a different belief. So you can have great conversations with other people. And this is the Saints Around the World. So this is in uh, conjunction with the religions book, especially for older children. But this is for all the grades. And this is just such a beautiful book. If you haven't seen this, if you don't own this, it is so beautiful.
not required text that you can use. This is a an optional read aloud for first through fifth grade or even your younger students, though we have safe books picked out for pre-K. This one has a lot more reading in it, more words. So this could be a great reader for an elementary student and it makes a great read aloud. And the pictures are beautiful. Another optional text, How to Teach Nature Journaling by uh, John, Muir's Law, John Muir Laws. This book is actually free on his site as a download, as a PDF download. I bought it in print because I'm, I'm old and I like printed books, but that's what this looks like. It helps you if it's written almost like in a, um, a group setting. Um, so you, it tells you exactly what to say and have them do. And then different responses to go on after that. You can use this with your homeschool if you want to do even more with nature study. This is not required. It can help you with some direction if you're just absolutely feeling stuck and you just want more than what's in salt and light. I have everything written out for you, but just in case. And another optional text is the World of Marian Apparitions. This goes with the World Cultures and Religions Study. This is a gorgeous book about Marian apparitions around the world. Not all of these are officially approved, but we do write uh, inside Salt and Light what, uh, the, what the qualifications are for the church to approve apparitions. So you can study that and how that process is done as well. But this is a gorgeous book to have on hand. I love it. And it really brings it to life, those apparitions. Okay, next we are going to go with the literature picks. We're gonna start with the pre-K kindergarten. This is Tell Me About the Catholic Faith. It's the same one we used in year uh, two of Salt and Light, but we are doing the second half of the book. I don't put a specific schedule for this, but know that you read one to two of these stories per week and you'll finish the book by the end of the school year. Or just read one per week and one, finish whenever you finish. No big deal, but it's great. It's beautiful. I love this book. I know I forgot to do a video so far on year two's pre-K, but this is in there. This is a book by Anthony uh, DiStefano, and it is called How the Angels Got Their Wings. This, I love his books. They are so beautiful. Like the art is stunning. So I have to give you like a little flip through. I mean, look how beautiful this is. I love this, this image is probably my favorite because the guardian angel is always around us. It's so, that's so beautiful. So anyways, I think you'll really enjoy this book. If you haven't bought this book, it's fantastic. You're going to love it. This is Lily Lolek, Future Saint by Katie Warner. Next is Jack Giorgio, Future Priest. Get kids talking about vacation early. These are excellent read alouds, beautiful books. This beautiful book, Mysteries of the Holy Rosary, The Life of Jesus and Mary. Oh, get ready to be blown away by the art in this book. In this book. It's so beautiful. So when you're praying family rosary, you can have them flip through this book and just reading it to them also works as a little simple read aloud. You can read it for whatever rosaries for that day. You can just read it to them, show them the pictures, let them feast on these beautiful, beautiful images. Isn't that gorgeous? And finally, we have A Garden for Mary by Nina Gaynor. And we will be doing Mary Garden this year. That is for all grades. I love this book so much. It's beautiful. 
yeah, you can read this any grade. I would have bought this for myself. It's just so pretty. All right, the elementary literature is Sadako and the Thousand Paper Cranes. This is for our history read. So if you have other students, this is listed in theirs as well. You can do it as a read aloud. Your older students can read it alone if you don't have younger students, or you could just use it as a read aloud time for no matter how old your kids are. So this is kind of a tearjerker if you haven't read it. It's a great story. I remember reading this in elementary school, and I think our class um, made like a Thousand Paper Cranes and sent them to Japan. We had like Japan, a uh, Japanese uh, uh, pen pals. So, oh, and it does show you how to make a paper crane. Next is this series of books. This one is The Weight of a Mass, A Tale of Faith. These are beautifully illustrated books. And your younger students will love the art and the story. Your older students, even your high school students, if you're reading this aloud, will really get the allegory in it and all of the symbolism. So that's the first one. The next is Take It to the Queen, A Tale of Hope. Okay. And finally, Portrait of the Sun, A Tale of Love. This one's probably my favorite, but the one that makes me want to cry the most, but it's so good. Again, these stories are so well written and beautifully illustrated. I'm a sucker for a beautiful book. Okay. So Dr. the Thousand Paper Cranes, the second one is A Long Walk to Water. Um, it does have some violence in it, but it is an excellent, excellent book. The next book is Call It Courage. Next is Animal Farm, not 1984. For elementary, or I mean, sorry, middle school, Animal Farm is the reading. I, this is the book that we have. You can buy, I think I linked just Animal Farm. Um, and then it would be an optional read for high school if they wanted to read 1984 as well. But this is just Animal Farm here. So, and finally, this is called the Virtue Chronicles, and it is a box set of three. The first book is The Saintly Outlaw. The second book is called The Warrior Maiden. It's that thick. And the third book is called The Hidden Heroes. Again, Sadako and the Thousand Paper Cranes. Next book is the one that's missing. Um, it's A Long Walk to Water. Um, From Islam to Christ by Daria Little. Next, I can't find the cover for this. It is The Anti-Mary Exposed by Carrie Gress. This is such an excellent topic for this age range, these high schoolers, for sure. Next, we have Carlo Acutis, A Millennial in Paradise. This teenager was amazing. Such an incredible, incredible saint for teens, for sure. Next, this book is only for 11th and 12th graders. Um, you can obviously look through it, and if you want your 9th and 10th grader to read it, they absolutely can, um, or you can table it for later. This is written by Noelle Mearing. And this is the font size. 
This is such a good book. Such a good book. A Christian Response to the Cult of Progressive Ideology. So, so relevant. This is Animal Farm. They can read 1984. 11th and 12th graders um, probably only for 1984. That is optional. What's required is Animal Farm. And again, you can just buy the Animal Farm book if you don't want them to read 1984, if they don't want to, or whatever. But it's a great book. Both of them are great books. So We have The St. Cloud of Gaul, The Prince Who Traded Kingdoms by Susan Peek. This book stayed with me for days. I was, I was sad to finish it so quickly because it it stayed with me and I just, I didn't want the journey to end. It's so, so good. Such an excellent read. So I hope your students enjoy that. And next, these last two books are by Regina Doman. Fairy Tales Retold. And they're good for teenage girls and boys. This one is The Midnight Dancers. It's basically a retelling of the 12 dancing princesses. And these are, Catholic, these are written by a Catholic author. I think she has 10 kids, actually. So that is Midnight Dancers. You can get these on Kindle, I think for like five bucks. So if, uh, cause the prints are kind of, kind of spendy, um, but I mean, they are really good to have. So Black as Night, a fairy tale we told. This one is Snow White, but um, these are just wonderful reads. The chapters aren't too terribly long um, and that should finish up high school for the literature block. In the curriculum, when you see the literature, it is color-coded faith, history, and literature, so you know which course it's for. Um, and I like to just have them all together so that you can see how many books that they are reading. But you can see kind of where they're gonna end up being in the blocks within the curriculum. So I hope that was helpful. If you have any questions, just leave them below and I'll get back to you as soon as I can.